If you've seen any of my tactics guides for Bannerlord, you probably know a thing or two about commanding troops, like square formation for infantry, shield wall hold position for cavalry, and loose formation for archers. Great job. Now forget everything you learned because now it's all wrong. What the f That's right, patch 1.9 has made much of that data obsolete. But don't fret. In this video, we're going to look at more than 430 test battles, nearly 250,000 troops, and 163 casualties sustained to find the new and improved best practices. Since this will be a massive video, timestamps are in the description for your convenience. Let's jump right into it. We'll begin the testing with infantry. In the previous patches, the AI would try to get to the closest enemy, even if it meant shoving the friendly units out of the way. The side with a wider line would generally turn the enemy's flank and curl inward. Now, units are much more concerned. They will move forward at most a few paces to attack an enemy, but anything beyond that limit and they will hold their position, making it much harder to flank the enemy with a single formation line. Battles tend to last longer now in 1.9, which does provide more opportunities for us to maneuver. While this change might seem minor, it actually changes our best practices when commanding melee units. As with before, the only way to know for sure which formations, commands, and line lengths are best to use, we must fight a mirror match. In this case, both sides have 300 Imperial Legionary. One side is the control group, always using line formation and charge command. The player side will be the variable and test different combinations. Up first, line formation and holding ground with a shorter line than the enemies. We can see a massive difference between the previous patches and 1.9 here, as the charging side doesn't commit to a full envelopment. Instead, they slowly feed troops in as their friends die off. The reason hold ground wins here is, as the charge side units die off, it takes several seconds for their friends to reinforce, which means the the hold ground side has local numerical superiority for that time. Can't you morons do anything right? As the hold ground units die, they have only one or two steps to reinforce. Now we test having a longer line on hold ground. We see the same issues as the previous test, but in reverse. The longer line units take more time to reinforce and result in heavy losses. And finally, we use roughly equal line lengths and keep our units on hold ground. The battle is fairly close at the start, but a major issue crops up for the hold ground. The units in the back meant to reinforce walk around aimlessly, meaning units engaged in combat will be at a numerical disadvantage. Once again, it's a convincing defeat. Before we dive deep into the data, I wanted to point out a few important things. I spent over a week alone collecting the data for this guide, but it's still not enough to say the set is statistically solid. Months of testing and hundreds of tests for each scenario would be needed. That being said, we need to put significantly less weight on the KDR and much more on the win-loss ratio since that data point is fairly accurate. With that out of the way, let's look at the results. Having a matching line length on hold ground seems to have a slight edge at 5 wins over 8 tests, but I suspect running this 100 times would result in a tie, so at best, hold ground is breaking even. Having a shorter line than the enemy has a positive win rate, and watching each battle closely, the wins were extremely extremely consistent. The enemy line would slowly wrap around and get whittled down. Having a longer line than the enemy on hold ground proved to be a disaster given the slow reinforcement rate. Overall, having a shorter line than the enemy proved to be the most efficient while holding ground. Moving on, let's test line formation and charge command with the three different line lengths, starting with a shorter line. Something odd happened here though. The line collapses to a compact formation with very little movement for reinforcements. The results were less than impressive a landslide loss. For the next test, I added one difference, using the advance command until the lines meet and then issuing the charge command. Without advance, the line breaks apart into two ineffective groups and loses badly. By including advance, we get a solid, organized line up until impact. This results in a close win in the end. Finally, we use equal lengths charge command from the start. And here you can see exactly why adding advance is incredibly important. The line groups up on both ends with a very thin middle and gets completely stomped. Looking at the data, we have some easily digestible results. Shorter lines when charging is bad. Matching length lines will be a coin toss and having longer lines has a massive advantage. Now for the king of the previous patch, shield wall. Starting with holding ground and matching line lengths, the shield wall gets off to a solid lead. I've watched close to 50 shield wall battles at the unit versus unit level, and shield walls will usually perform better because they focus on defense, making less frequent attacks, but also blocking significantly more incoming attacks. In the
the end, shield wall wins convincingly. Next, we test a longer line and see the charge side doing some strange things. The line disconnecting from time to time and then going back in. The end results in a razor thin win, essentially a tie. One point before we get into the data. I'm going to speed things up or this video would easily be over 60 minutes long, so I'm not showing some tests that have uninteresting results. Having a smaller line for shield wall hold position is a really bad idea. Avoid it. Matching line lengths results in two things, either a razor thin margin win or a devastating loss, neither of which are good in the long run. The same can be said for longer lines. Essentially, don't use shield wall if you're planning on holding ground. This was not the case in the previous patches and will be tough to unlearn. Now we test shield wall charge, starting with a much shorter line. As soon as the lines meet, the battle plays out very similarly to the line formation with a couple small differences. Shield wall units move much slower and attack less frequently. This results in a much closer win. After watching these tests closely, I wanted to try out using a slightly shorter line using shield wall. Once again, we start using advanced command to avoid breaking apart our formation, then give the charge command at the last second. Our troops maintain a tight shield formation and are able to fight off the enemy even while being flanked from the rear, resulting in a massive win with nearly 50% of our troops still on the field. Now we try having a slightly longer shield wall line than the enemies. The battle starts off strong but quickly breaks down into a back and forth struggle. By the end, it's still a convincing victory but not as good as the previous battle. As expected, it's a grueling battle of attrition, coming down to the wire. It's a win this time, but a statistical coin flip based on the result over the long run. Now we come to the first definitive results of the guide. As long as our line is somewhere between slightly longer or slightly shorter than the enemies, we'll be in great shape. Going too short or too long is bad, so avoid that blunder. We're going to be skipping a lot of the other formations, but I wanted to share these two with you before we look at the data. First is the skein holding ground. In previous patches, skein was used to look intimidating, but did little else. In this patch, we see a significant improvement. Units in skein are able to support each other more effectively in battle, resulting in solid victories. It's not a line slide, but the results were consistent. And previously, circle formation could only be used in conjunction with the charge command once the enemy units commit to battle. But that's changed. Giving the charge command results in a huge loss, while holding ground often results in a loss, but performs much better than the previous patch. Loose formation is awful, no surprise there. Don't use it. Circle formation should still be avoided, but it's interesting to see it perform better. Square formation was a huge flop. In the previous patches, square formation and charge command was a massive winner, but all that's changed. Don't use it anymore for infantry versus infantry combat. And finally, skein formation is a huge winner. I'm so happy to be using skein formation once more. If you thought the last tests were good, wait till you see the next ones. Starting with circle formation, making it as tight as possible, and giving the advanced command into charge once the contact is made. The battle is much slower than all previous results. The line charge jumps to an early lead of about 20 troops, but as the battle rages on, their line thins and breaks into two, making our compact shield mob fight more effectively and come out on top. Once again, it's not a landslide, but it's a solid win. Next, we test a tightly packed skein formation using the advanced and charge commands. As the two lines meet, the skein formation moves to the flank to support, making a lopsided battle from the start. By the end, over 100 troops still remain, a solid victory. And finally, we end with the Bandalord ASMR. It's so satisfying to watch them move into the chevron shape. This time, our skein is a bit wider and should closely match the enemy's line. As the lines meet, our charge command is given and the slaughter begins. Our skein has an early lead that only expands further as time goes on. The results are slightly better than the shorter line, but not by much. Moving on to the data, loose formation still fails. Circle formation has some impressive results, winning 4 out of the 6 battles. Square formation results in a statistical tie, and skein sees a massive improvement, winning almost 100% of the time. The only battle where it lost was an outlier as the AI had bugged out. I know this is a ton of data to take in, so I've narrowed down the formations to viable options. If it's not on this list, do not use it. Holding ground in line formation is viable provided our line is not too long. Shorter generally performed better. Line charge is viable provided our line is slightly longer than the enemy's. Shield wall is still a solid option provided we're using the charge command and our line isn't too much longer or shorter than the enemy's line. Circle charge formation is no longer a meme and will work, but but if you want the best results for shield infantry, use skein formation. I struggled to find a situation in which skein failed, so use it as often as you can with a slight preference to charging over holding ground. However, you must keep one thing in mind for all of these. Using the advanced command first is critical to success. With the AI being much more passive now, maintaining our troops in an orderly formation is paramount.
paramount to victory. As soon as the first soldier in our formation reaches the enemy, issue the charge command. Moving on, we need to test the other infantry units, the shock troops. In previous patches, these guys would drastically underperform against their shielded counterparts in most situations. Now that units aren't pushing forward as hard, they have more space to swing and shock troops thrive on extra space, making them the ultimate infantry unit. Let's look at a couple tests to see why. We'll use Legionary versus Manavliaton. In previous patches, Manavliaton would lose this matchup 100% of the time and by a large margin. But now, the tables have turned and shock troops are the king of melee. In this case, half of our Manavliaton survived. We test again using Skane Formation Advance, Into Charge, and Demolish these Legionary. It's not even close. Let's look at the data. It's almost irrelevant which formation and command we use when it comes to shock troops. The one caveat, Shield Wall or any Shield Wall-like formation should be avoided, like Circle and Square. I even tested the Tier 4 Manavliaton, and they earned a 1.8 KDR against the Legionary. I'll be going heavily into Culture versus Culture testing after this guide, and shock troops will now make up the majority of my army composition with just enough shields to block projectiles. So we now know that shock troops are the best infantry units in melee combat. But which shock troop is the best? Let's find out. We won't watch every battle in the interest of time, but let's look at some of the more interesting ones. We start testing Manavliaton against all other shock troops. The Sturgeon Linebreaker has always been my favorite in-game. Their axes are terrifying. In this test, we can see why. It's a very close battle going down to only 77 units in the end. Up next, the biggest surprise in this whole guide, the Volgir. I never thought of Landia as having great infantry, but their shock troops are incredibly effective. In the end, only 54 Manavliaton are left. Looking at the data, I want to point out a few things. Some tests were ran only a couple times because it was quite obvious the opponent had no chance of winning. In order to get accurate KDR stats, we would need to run hundreds of meticulously controlled tests. However, we can say with certainty here that some units will win over their counterparts at a much higher frequency. The only unit the Manavliaton struggled against was the Volgir. One battle was lost to the line breakers, but that was due to some tailworld math with AI control. Kazate doesn't even have a shock troop, so we used the Darkon as a substitute. Clearly, the Manavliaton is an amazing unit now, pulled up from being one of the worst tier 5 infantry from the previous patch. One possible weakness from the previous testing is that having human control would artificially improve the test unit's results. To counter this, we test the reverse. We'll now be controlling the line breakers versus the Manavliaton in this round. I've got plenty of data to show you, but this test was of interest because the AI makes a real 69 head move and moves into loose formation before engaging. Terwold's math is strong here, and the Manavliaton are crushed badly. Once again, the Volgir are on display. It's a fairly close race to the bottom with only 87 units left. The data is pretty clear. Assuming no Terwold's math with unit formations, Manavliaton are some of the best shock troops. Volgir is a bit closer, and we would need to run many more tests to see which are better, but it's safe to say that they are close to being evenly matched. The Sturgeon Linebreakers blow both the Asurai Palace Guards and the Batanian Veteran Foxmen out of the water, and I won't even mention the Darkon anymore because they lose to all shock troops. Next are my favorite looking shock troop, the Asurai Palace Guard. Unfortunately, their looks fail them in battle, as we can see here against the Manavliotons. They get easily wiped out with 124 enemy troops still remaining in the field. For a real test, we battle two two-handed axe versus two-handed axe against the Sturgeon Linebreaker. Once again, they come up short with the Linebreakers still having 112 units left. Interestingly enough, the Palace Guards did well against the Manavliaton on average, but for the test recording, they got stomped. It just goes to show you that these results are incredibly volatile, so to get accurate KDR results, we need hundreds of tests. Palace Guards also fared well against the veteran Falksmen, but failed miserably against everyone else. I was really excited to test out the Vlandian Volgir, as I've never had a high opinion of any Vlandian infantry prior to this test. Their toughest opponent seemed to be the Manavliaton, but for this test, they do quite well. In the end, 117 Volgir are left. Overall, the only unit that stood a chance was the Manavliaton, but the Volgir still won 6 of the 8 battles. Everywhere else was a complete stomp, never going below 1.3 KDR. Again, the KDR stat is mostly useless without running a lot of tests, but clearly the Volgir is one of the deadliest shock troops in the game against foot troops. And finally, we have the black sheep of the group the Batanian Veteran Foxman. The only test worth looking at here was against the Palace Guards because they are equally trash. 
Correction, the veteran foxmen are much worse. Looking at the data, we can see that once in a while they get lucky and pull a razor thin victory over the other shock troops, but it's mostly due to AI incompetence. However, one thing to note, they still perform better than the Darkon, which are a solid shielded troop. Just don't put them up against equal numbers of enemy shock troops. When looking at the difference between tier four and tier five shock troops, the Falksman has a huge difference. Tier four uses a two-handed Fox blade, while the tier five uses a very long Rumphalia polearm. I had a suspicion the Rumphalia was causing their poor performance, so I tested again using the tier 4 Falksman. In the first test, we go head to head with the Manavliaton. It's really close into the last 100 units on each side. Then the Falksman take over and completely clean up. A tier 4 unit just beat one of the best tier 5 shock troops. Let's test against another contender for the top spot, the Volgir. As soon as the lines meet, a gap in the numbers opens up in favor of the Falksman. They end up with 103 survivors, which is incredible considering they are a full tier lower. Looking at the data, the only battles they lost were very close. If we were to match both sides based on their daily wage upkeep, the Falksman side could afford up to 450 troops, compared to 300 for the tier 5, which would be no contest, a complete stomp. Let's recap everything we went over regarding shock troops versus other troops. While looking at KDR and win rate is fun, it's really not that accurate without a lot more tests. So instead, let's look at some general rules of thumb. As the player, we have a decided advantage over the AI, so even an inferior unit can come out on top with clever usage of timing and commands. The Manavliaton is effective against all shock troops in the game. The heroic linebreaker has a distinct advantage against palace guards and veteran falksmen, but struggle against the others. The palace guard can hold its own against Manavliaton and Foxman, but lose badly against the others. The Volgir excel against all shock troops in his class. The veteran Foxman struggle against everything, but the tier 4 Foxman perform incredibly well, so avoid upgrading Foxman to tier 5. Patches 1.8.1 and 1.9 saw major changes to the way cavalry work in Bannerlord. Let's find out if it actually helped or not. We start by using legionary troops versus tier 5 cataphracts and test different formations. Up first, line formation on hold ground using a short line. The initial charge doesn't do much damage and the AI gets stuck inside the infantry line. The results aren't pretty. 213 infantry are left remaining. Let's test it again using a longer line. This time, the initial charge does a massive amount of damage with 17 kills in a split second. The cavalry still get stuck inside the line formation, but with the line spread out so thin, they make quick work of the infantry. 211 cavalry remain in the end. Square formation took a huge hit for infantry versus infantry combat, but perhaps it'll do better here with cavalry. The initial charge downs only a single infantry. The battle takes a significantly longer time to complete, and the infantry remain in a solid lead the whole time. 145 infantry remain by the end. Circle formation seemed to do better in our previous test this patch, so let's see how it holds up against cavalry. This was by far the longest battle we've seen in this testing so far. Several months later taking more than three times the length of any other battle. In the end, it's still a loss for infantry, but the battle was close and could have been used as a delaying formation. Finally, let's test what happens when we give the charge command instead of holding ground. The initial charge does moderate damage, seven infantry lost. However, it's quickly apparent the infantry are much more likely to seek out the closest enemy, resulting in more kills and less infantry deaths. We end with 198 legionary for this test. While it does seem cavalry are a bit more effective in mounted melee combat, they are still incredibly easy to counter as we can see here in the data. Having a tight formation on hold ground was very effective, making a short line or square formation being the best options. However, if cavalry make contact with our infantry line, giving the charge command all but guarantees us a victory. So we looked at how legionary do against cataphract, but those results may not hold true against other cavalry. So let's test the best cavalry from each culture. The Druzenik seemed to be the only cavalry that could cause problems. The initial charge causes 10 casualties, but like always, it turns into a huge battle of attrition. The cavalry seem to hold the lead and carry it through to the end with 154 troops still remaining. We can still see a strong showing for the legionary versus cavalry while in line formation and holding ground. But what happens if our units are moving? Let's test it out. We test it again using the Druzhenik. The initial contact is huge. Many more casualties than on hold ground, but more importantly, very few cavalry are going down in the exchanges. Infantry are not able to gang up effectively against cavalry 
choice since their primary focus is moving. It's a long, drawn-out battle chipping away the legionary, but in the end, 137 Druznik are left standing. Looking at the data, only the Batanian and Kuzik cavalry failed to win, although the veteran Ferris did struggle on half the battles. One key takeaway from this, keep your troops still and compact when getting charged by cavalry, and don't be afraid to use the charge command. We won't have time in this video to cover all shield infantry versus cavalry, but I was way too curious to test the Sturgeon Spearmen and Axemen, starting with the Heavy Spearmen versus Cataphract. The initial impact doesn't do much. Heavy Spearmen jump out to an early lead and dominate through to the end. They lose only 60 troops in total, much stronger results than the Legionary. Now for the toughest test, Sturgeon Civil War. The Druzhnik caused some damage initially, but the kill feed turns green and the cavalry are quickly dispatched, leaving 149 infantry left. Let's try this one again, but using a wider line just to show the difference. The initial charge is devastating. 22 losses in the blink of an eye. Initially, the infantry closed the gap, but the weight of the cavalry is too much, finishing them off with 141 still standing. Once again, we can see in the data a clear dominance for infantry in tight formations while holding ground. The only battle lost were the three tests done using a regular size line. Let's quickly run through the heavy axemen so we can compare the results. These Druznik cavalry have a decent first charge, but get completely demolished once they get stuck in. It seems the axemen are great against heavily armored targets like high-end cavalry. The battle ends with 270 axemen left, a massive victory. I didn't need to run more than one test for any of these. Clearly, axemen are beasts against high-tier cavalry and outperform their spearmen counterpart. I also wanted to point out one glaring issue. Batanian cavalry are absolutely trash. 42 KDR in favor of the Axemen. I also decided to test the rest of the shock troops so we can get a rough idea how they each do against enemy cavalry. As expected, the Manavliaton obliterated the Cataphract, with 278 still remaining. We see much of the same when facing off against the Kazate Heavy Lancer ending the battle with 276 troops still standing. Not a single cavalry unit stood a chance, with the Cataphract and Horsemen both struggling the most. Sturgeon Linebreakers do pretty well against the Druzhnik cavalry, taking a bit of a hit early on, but really dominating them in close quarter melee. 267 Linebreakers are left in the end. I was really impressed with their numbers overall. Not one of these tests went below 5 KDR. We test the Palace Guard next against the Batanian Horsemen. Surprisingly, the Horsemen actually get a couple kills on the first charge, but it's it's all a steep downhill from there. The palace guards are left with 283 in the end. They perform surprisingly well against all types of cavalry, much more impressive than their performance against other shock troops. So we know the Volgier did well against infantry, but maybe they have a weakness against cavalry. Let's look at Volgier versus Cataphract first. It's a really nasty initial charge, killing more than 20, but the Cataphract melt away like butter. 242 Volgier are left standing in the end. While they did win each battle, the numbers seem to suggest they aren't as effective effective as others like the Manavliaton and Palace Guards. More data is needed to say for certain though. It's time to test the veteran Foxman against the Vlandian Champion. The Champions have a strong initial charge, but get destroyed quickly once stuck in. 247 veteran Foxmen are left in the end. Looking at the data, it's difficult to see a weakness. Most shock troops had similar results as well. And because we tested them earlier, let's continue the tradition with the Tier 4 Foxmen against the Batanian Horsemen. The Horsemen didn't get a single kill on the initial contact and proceeded to feed the whole way to the end. 291 Foxmen are left at the end. The numbers are surprisingly close to other shock troops, again reinforcing the idea that the tier 4 Foxmen is one of the best in the game. Now let's test how effective cavalry are against archers. In the previous patch, they perform quite poorly, oftentimes losing to equal number engagements. We start with a least efficient archer formation, a very short line aka the box. The archers take the charge on the chin, only losing 5. As the battle rages on, it's quite obvious how poorly AI handles cavalry. They easily get stuck inside the formation and get stomped. 240 archers are left in the end. Now we stretch our line to something a bit more realistic. The initial charge is very strong, knocking out more than double the previous test. The cavalry still get stuck inside the archers and are easily destroyed. 201 archers still remain at the end. Finally, we test a long archer line. The charge connects and causes massive casualties, nearly 40 in less than one second. The remaining cavalry are still still struggling to fight through the archer line, but eventually group up and defeat the archers. With only 98 cavalry left, it's quite a disappointing result. For the last test, we keep our archer formation moving across the map while the cavalry continuously charge them. 
The initial charge does some damage, but less than against the long line. However, the archers are having a hard time doing any return damage to the cavalry, causing no casualties. By the end, only 5 cavalry were lost. This is exactly what I had in mind when I think archers versus cavalry. There's a lot of info on this one, but the general rule is the more compact our line is, the better they will do against cavalry. If they are spread out thin, or even worse, in loose formation, it's guaranteed to end in misery. I also dismounted the cataphract and held fire on the archers to see how they would do heads up. And cataphract did quite well, meaning the issue cavalry have versus archers is getting stuck in enemy formations while mounted. I also tested using the other cavalry and the Druznik and veteran ferris performed very well, even against compact formations, but all others still lost. And to be thorough, let's test crossbows to see how they perform against cavalry. We start with the standard empire crossbow versus cataphract. The crossbows unleash a single volley and get one kill, but get clobbered by the cavalry charge. Once in melee though, the crossbow crossbows really show their strengths. 254 remain at the end. Next, we test against the Asurai veteran Ferris. Since these are skirmisher cavalry, half of them charge straight in while the other half circle around the outside, throwing their javelins. While they are more effective than the cataphract, they still lose badly. 201 crossbows survive to the end. Let's test again using the veteran Ferris and moving our crossbows across the map. Even more Ferris cross into the crossbow line instead of circling around from the outside, and they trade evenly with the crossbows. Looking closely, it seems the crossbows are still able to group up around the enemy cavalry as they enter their space. The crossbows are ahead in kills up to the very end when they break and run from morale loss. Only 78 cavalry remain, showing just how strong crossbows are in melee. Looking at the data, the only time cavalry performed well against crossbowmen consistently was attacking while the crossbowmen were moving across the map. This means recruiting crossbowmen against cavalry heavy enemies could be a good idea. I was curious to see if dismounting cavalry after the initial damage done could help increase their effectiveness. We see a solid 23 kills from the initial charge and order the dismount. However, things go downhill from there and the crossbowmen are very effective in direct melee combat. 118 crossbowmen survived the ordeal. Looking at the data, most cavalry really struggled in this test. Only the Druznik were able to win twice and the margin was extremely thin and it could have gone either way. I know this guide is dragging on a bit so let's speed it up. I repeated the same test against archers and was able to dominate them using all cavalry except You guessed it, the Batanian Trashmen, I mean Horsemen. Don't use these guys under any circumstance. There will be at least three people that leave a comment saying you just need to move cavalry past the enemy formation and they will dominate. Well, let's test this just for you. The first charge is effective, but the archers even the score by shooting them in the back. By the end of the second charge, archers have already taken the numbers lead. And after the third charge, all hope is lost and only a handful of cavalry are left. The battle ends with 170 archers still living, which is more than half of their starting numbers. How do you win with cavalry, you might ask? I don't know all the answers yet, but I found a a cool tactic that worked reliably well. Splitting cavalry up into three groups and charging from different directions really made a big difference. This tactic will smash into the enemy lines from different angles, causing less cavalry to get stuck on each other and thinning the enemy group, making them easier targets. After only a couple cycles of charging, the enemy is routed, leaving 240 cavalry still alive on the field. And because most battles don't have 300 cavalry or 300 archers, we test again with 100 of each. Splitting them into three groups once again and charging from three sides proved effective and fatal for the archers. By the end, just two-thirds of the cavalry still remain on the field. And for the final section, some cav on cav action. I'll be honest, watching cavalry fight other cavalry is exceedingly boring and tedious, so I'll keep the clips to a minimum here but provide all the data your greedy hearts desire. Of course we start with the mirror match, cataphract versus cataphract, with the player side using line formation and holding ground. The enemy crashes into our line and our cavalry quickly melt away, while on hold ground down our back two rows sit idle while the enemy faces off with numerical superiority, causing an easy win for them. In the end, 139 out of 200 cavalry remain. We repeat the same test, but using shield wall hold position instead. This was one of the best cavalry versus cavalry tactics in the previous patch, and it seems to hold up still in 1.9, pulling ahead with 95 troops left at the end. Finally, let's compare what happens if we issue the charge command while in shield wall formation. The two lines meet and they slowly peck at each other. As I said, 
ahead. This is like watching paint dry. Let's skip to the end. Our cavalry pull ahead with 94 still alive. Let's unpack a few things here since it's quite important. Cavalry still perform exceedingly well using shield wall formation. This is true for both holding ground and charging. The only reason we should be using anything other than shield wall is perhaps line formation for faster movement speed. Then switching to shield wall before making contact. Score formation can also be used, but frankly, why add more complexity? Stick with shield wall and you can't go wrong. Also, Skein still sucks for cavalry. Go figure. I went ahead and tested all the cav previously used against one another just so we can have a rough idea of how they perform. Bear in mind, these are mostly single tests and anything within 25% or so of each other of 1 KDR should be taken with a grain of salt. For example, Cataphract versus Ferris shows a win, but at 0.86 KDR it could have easily gone either way. It's a coin flip and we need more data to say for sure what it is. If there's enough interest, I can test these out at 20 or 30 battles each to get better data. Let me know in the comments. One thing is for sure, cataphracts struggle against all cavalry except the Batanian horsemen. Next up, the Sturgeon Druznik. These guys are quite strong against most cavalry, but struggle some against the Vlandian champion and get demolished by the Kazate heavy lancer. It's unfortunate to even include the Ferris in this list because they fulfill more of a skirmisher role than a direct melee combat. However, they're there is no alternative for the asteroid to test, so here we are. They trade evenly with the cataphract and lose to everyone else except the Batanian horsemen. One of the strongest showing for cavalry versus cavalry is the Vlandian champion. These guys did have some close calls against the Sturgeon Druznik, but three wins in a row gives a bit more confidence. The only unit they struggled against is the Kuzate Heavy Lancer. Okay, do we even need to see this? Really? Don't like them? Then neither do I! Get the hell out of here! Here's a challenge for you. Complete a world conquest using only Batanian cavalry. Good luck. And finally, the Kazate Heavy Lancer. I was quite shocked to see these results, as every win was well over 1.5 KDR. These guys are animals at fighting off enemy cavalry. The only downside is they stop at tier 5 and could potentially be outmatched by noble cavalry that can go up to tier 6. Two other areas that I did not cover in this guide but still tested heavily were foot archers and mounted archers. Neither of these groups changed in 1.9 from what I can tell. So if you're not sure how to use them effectively, I have a guide for each of these on screen, so feel free to check them out. I also put links in the description for you. A massive shout out to the channel members and Patreon supporters. Thank you so much for the support as it's allowed me to hire an editor, a website designer, and a bookkeeper, all to help me free up time and bring more content to everyone. In the previous patches, Manavliaton would seem to be the Manav...